Welcome to the show. I am Ted Stryker, joined today by a great rapper, writer, he's a model. Playboy Cardi is here. That's you, Playboy Cardi. What's up, man? Good to see you. Good to see you, too. So excited you're on the show, playing in front of this audience that we have here. Crazy. It's been a short amount of time in your career, and you have already accomplished so much, not just on one thing, but on many things, and are already inspiring human beings and artists. Is this... Crazy. <laughs> did you think it would happen this fast? Was this always the path from, say, five years ago till now? Not at all. Um, it's a blessing, you know. You never, you know, see what's going to happen in the future. You just live. I always lived this lifestyle, you know. And I always knew I wanted to be something, you know. When you say that you wanted to be something, something in the arts under, like, maybe fashion, music, or was it maybe something in sports when you were a teen? It's like, I just want my name to hold weight, you know? Like, mm. I just want to be respect. I just need that respect, you know? That's it. And where does respect come from? Is it for how you carry yourself? Is it the lyrics? Is it the videos? What is it for you? Everything. Most definitely how you carry yourself, you know what I'm saying? And just like, maintaining, stay ten toed, loyalty, and just getting money, you know what I'm saying? Keeping the ones around me that I trust, you know, and just keep selling. And is it about instincts to know who to trust? Or do you have somebody inside your inner circle that's been around quite a bit that can guide you? How does it work for you? You know, I hang around like OGs or older people who know, you know what I'm saying? And I take that and run with it. And the people I got in my circle, I just, you know what I'm saying, pass it on. And we all grow together, learn off our own mistakes. You know, <laughs> is it um, as outsiders look to see what you're doing? I mean, you make it look so easy. Here's a song. It's going to chart. I'm going to collaborate with this person. I put out my album. It debuts in the top five. How how much work is going behind everything you're doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, I do it every day so much I'll be forgetting on working. But it's it's just lifestyle. Like I said, like. I be doing it, you know what I mean? I got two locations, home, studio. Mm. And is it. the studio at the home, or you have, you, you have to leave the home to get to a studio? I leave home to go to the studio. I make songs at home sometimes. Okay. Most definitely at the studio, though. I'd love to know, like, how you even ended up in this chair today, so I want to go back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Where were you born? What state? What city? Atlanta, Georgia. In Atlanta? Yeah. And that's where you spent most of your youth? Yeah, born and raised. Okay. Um, and it, is it that city that drives you creatively? Yeah. Really? I had to get up out of there. That that drives me, hmm. you know what I'm saying? I wasn't, you know what I'm saying? Had to get up, that, the inspiration was to get up out of Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? And when I do go back home, I have my shit together. Okay. Um, I'm just curious, like, why was it? Why was there a drive to get out of Atlanta? I mean, Atlanta is what you make. It, you know what I'm saying? And at the time, I was just living with my mom. <laughs> mm -hmm. You feel me? I knew I wasn't going to college. I had to make a move. So, yeah. How far along in your life did you know that uh, you wanted to do music for your life? Not just dabble in it and maybe say that you have a song out, but when did you know that you really wanted to? take it to a different level? The moment I realized that it was people I did, I liked my music, you know? That pushed me. That was enough. Were you pretty good in school? Were you good in English? Good at the essays? Good at all that? Uh, you know, always good at the basic. You know what I'm saying? I was, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't good in like chemistry and shit. Right. I was terrible at that. <laughs> I don't think anyone's great at that except our doctors. Oh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. How important is it for an artist, no matter what the genre is, to just be the whole package from their style to the video to everything? It's something that you work on, you know what I'm saying? Because mm. it's like, there's a lot of people out there that's very talented at rapping that can't dress for the shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people who can dress and can't rap for shit, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you work on it. That makes someone uh, have longevity if you can combine those two things. If you're great at the art, 
and maybe you have the style and you can put it together and mm -hmm. you've got everything else going, that creates your longevity and you have the fans to go with it, right? Yes, yes. All right, who first reached out to you and said, man, you are really good at this? Um, a lot of people, um, ASAP, ASAP Mob. ASAP Mob, that's yeah. what took you from one level to get to the next. Yes. A lot of artists under that, under, with ASAP Mob, of mm -hmm. course. Did that feel like, um, some validation when they reached out to you and said, we really like what you're doing? I, honestly, that shit felt crazy, bro. Because it's like a lot of, it wasn't a, too many people that could tell me anything at the time. And that's who I was listening to all the way in South Atlanta. I was knowing about how the boys was coming to Harlem because of Rocky. So once he reached out to me, you know, that was just crazy, bro. Like, what? I'm from Atlanta. I'm the only nigga in Atlanta that ain't signed to nobody in Atlanta. Signed to ASAP Rocky. And what was the first meeting like? Was it an office building, someone's house? With some bitches. <laughs> at a bar or at a house? What, what was it? It was, with, it was just with some bitches, me and Flacco. That was the meeting. Your producers and what what do they bring to the table? I can't go when I ain't ready. I can't go when I ain't ready. For you, how important are your producers and what what do they bring to the table? My producer game crazy. Um, it means a lot. You know what I'm saying? Full on relationship like. Like me and Pierre, especially, we, we we used to sleep in the studio. Pierre has his, what's his tagline? Pierre, you want to come out here? Yo, Pierre. Yeah, yo, yo Pierre. He, me and him used to sleep in the studio. Wow. Yeah. And you slept there just because you were working, grinding, working? Yeah, exactly. And is he not afraid to tell you if he doesn't think something is good and vice versa? Yeah, yeah. If something trash, we both look at each other and say that. But... It's, it's, it's too crazy what we do, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, we talked about a little about that punk rock attitude and the song you opened up our show tonight, R.I.P. Mm -hmm. Mumble rap, got my mom a house. Mm -hmm. That's just a middle finger to people who are trying to put something down, correct? Mm -hmm. Did that line, was it scripted? Do you it's write most life and it's off the dome. Because when shit is real, you don't have to think about it. It's just natural. Right. It's really happening. <laughs> you feel me? I rap. I, I take the worst situations and the best situations, and that's how I make my music. You know what I'm saying? I just absorb all that. Whatever I was going through that week, put in the song. Might not say, talk about it, but right. the energy can most definitely came from it. Is it easy for you to separate exactly what you want to do from maybe the noises and music you've been hearing your whole life? Yeah, lately I've been on some like, I just want to make music that's going to travel instead of just impressing like this one crowd that I know that's it's going to go with, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Testing the waters, you feel me? Check it out. You need good lyrics, you need good beats. Another thing that we haven't talked about too much, you need to be great on stage. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, how were you? I used to be mad hood a little bit. I used to be on the stage just moving just a little bit. Yeah. And then I realized, like, yo, I really can't turn this shit all the way up. And that's what I do. And how long, how long um, did that take? I, we have a rock bands here, like in the beginning, they were just standing there. Then they, someone closed the show or they opened for someone and they were like, oh man, we're like, we are not good out here. <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yo, I, I don't know, man. Like, I just, you know, shout out to Nudie. I, I really haven't had anybody really open up for me a long time. You know what I'm saying? Nudie, Gunner, you know what I'm saying? Those are my boys They're from Atlanta. That's that's who I had it with me in my last tour. And, you know, their music is great, so, yeah. Do you see your music evolving, getting even heavier than it is, where maybe there's more mosh pitting, actually d diving more off stage? Yeah, it's really crazy now. It's like, yeah, it's crazy. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, it's like, man, I don't know. 
I, I don't expect, like, I don't expect for a show to ever, like, not be crazy at this point. You know what I'm saying? It's just because, like, they know exactly what I want, and and, that's, and I know exactly what they want. So at all times, it's not a dull moment. It's just straight, just forks in the air and just raging. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you brought it here tonight. I've seen you live before. Congrats on everything that you've accomplished in your I've career. Heard. It's not easy. It's not. It's not easy out there. Nothing is handed to anybody, and you have done it. Thanks for being on the show. <laughs> All right? For Playboy Cardi, I'm Stryker. That's been our show, everybody. See you guys next time. <laughs>